let's listen to what uh, the U.N. Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield said about this today. Colleagues, we appreciated the willingness of members of this council to take some of our edits and improve on this resolution. Still, certain key edits were ignored, including our request to add a condemnation of Hamas. And we did not agree with everything in the resolution. For that reason, we were unfortunately not able to vote yes. However, as I've said before, we fully support some of the critical objectives in this non-binding resolution. And we believe it was important for the council to speak out. Rick Stengel, uh, how big a departure was this for the United States today? I think it's a big departure, Lawrence. It's a shot across BB's bow. Uh, it's a way of saying, look, we're, our patience isn't endless. Um, and by the way, you know, BB's reaction was, was petulant by not sending the folks here. I think it's a prelude to even the consideration of the U.S. making a break with Israel. We don't want to make a break. We still want to keep our leverage. But um, this is about as far as we can go. Peter Barnard, we have all for our lifetimes watched the American uh, U.N. ambassador uh, stand for and beside Israel in the United Nations uh, at moments like these. Uh, what was your reaction to what we saw today? I think the Biden administration is tiptoeing towards the kind of actions that it would genuinely need to take um, in order to try to stop the, the carnage, the destruction of Gaza. And what it will take will be for the United States to say to Israel that we will no longer provide military aid for this war and we will no longer provide diplomatic immunity for Israel in international forums. If the Biden administration is not willing to take those steps, I think Benjamin Netanyahu will continue to defy the United States. But we're seeing for the first time, and this really is a historic shift, that those further steps, the serious use of U.S. leverage, is on the table. Let's listen to what uh, Donald Trump says about this. You have to finish up your war. You have to finish it up. You got to get it done. And uh, I'm sure you'll do that. Now we got to get to peace. You can't have this going on. Uh, and I will say Israel has to be very careful because you're losing a lot of the world. You're losing a lot of support. But you have to finish up. You have to get the job done. And you have to get on to peace. You have to get on to a normal life for Israel and for everybody else. Uh, Rick Stengel, uh, finish up, get the job done. How would you expect the Israeli government to interpret that? Well, I think they would, would, would interpret it as support, support for the invasion of Rafa, which the uh, administration is very dubious about. Um, I'm going to switch keys for a second, Lawrence. As you know, I am the co-chair of the Board of Care, the humanitarian organization, and we have been in Gaza and the West Bank for decades and decades supplying food. We've never seen anything like the approach to famine that is happening in Gaza now. In northern Gaza, 83 percent of the people are suffering from severe malnutrition. The whole point of a ceasefire, even one just a temporary one during the month of Ramadan, is to get food into Gaza. That's, that's a desperate need, and the administration knows that, and that's why they abstained in this ruling today. Uh, Peter Barnett, the, the Trump position of uh, you've got to finish up and uh, get the job done, what does that mean to you? To me, this is based on a lie. This idea that Israel can go in and finish up the job, it sounds familiar to Americans, doesn't it? We finished up the job when we overthrew, deposed the Taliban. We finished up the job when we deposed Saddam. This is, this is a lie. Yes, Hamas will no longer be in power, but Israel is going to be there fighting an insurgency for a long, long time, whether it calls itself Hamas or something else. Every, we know every one of those people that, that Israel has killed, the 30,000 or more, they are going to have relatives who are seeking revenge. So this idea that Israel can just go into Rafah and end this is, again, akin to the fallacy that we had when we went into Iraq and Afghanistan. Only a political solution that provides Palestinians a path to freedom can ultimately create safety for Israelis and Palestinians. And unfortunately, this Israeli government has no interest in that whatsoever.
Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.